Francis Sadis. I am a Belgian artist based in Mexico since 1986. Um, I arrived in Mexico as an architect and I drifted into the visual arts in the early 90s. Um, for this particular occasion, I was invited by the Secession to present a large series of paintings which were done over a span of about 20 years. I mean, I think I started the series in 1995. And uh, the particularity is that it's 111 paintings. We would see very small format. Um, and the paintings are like a, a palimpsest of time. I mean, they're painted over and over and over. It's a bit like a diary, uh, um, a sort of uh, notes on either projects that happened in the past or projects I'm working on or eventually ideas and uh, sparks for uh, future projects. Some of them, some of them are more directly, I mean, it's my relation in general to painting is, is, mm. is anything I cannot say through the performance, events, actions, I will try to uh, illustrate it in the paintings. So it's a little bit like a constant back and fro in between uh, actions and uh, graphic work, paintings, animation, um, and the two are very much uh, complementary. I mean, they're talking ultimately about the same thing, but they're just different expressions of the same idea. Um, and the two activities tend to happen in the same time frame. I mean, uh, if I build up a project, I will uh, be drawing and that will eventually lead to new paintings. The paintings themselves sometimes are what triggers a new action. So it's a, it's a very much a, like a correspondence and a interdependent practice. This particular work, maybe not, it's probably more like a, more on the poetic side if you want. But then again, the actions I'm referring to are often very much uh, um, influenced, to use your term, or uh, um, challenged and, and interacting with the context, and context being social, uh, confessional, uh, political, uh, sometimes uh, uh, it can be the weather in certain projects that I'm dealing with, like with tornadoes, etc. So it's, the works are always very much uh, taking into account the, the, the context, as I said, in a very great uh, uh, spectrum. And the images have more of an allegorical kind of dimension, if you want. Um, so you could, you could look at them like a very, uh, like a children's book, like images for a children's book, and not search or see any sort of uh, social or uh, political dimension, but if you start looking into the works they refer to, then you see that eventually they do have some kind of uh, social, political, whatever, background. Yeah. I think that's a little bit more uh, explored in the book, because in the book, as in the show, you have this kind of constant uh, um, variation of images and short texts. I mean, in the case of the, the, the exhibition, the texts are decontextualized in the sense that there, there's nothing saying where it happened and when it happened. In the book, you do have a small caption saying, okay, this happened in Jerusalem in 2003, and uh, this happened in uh, Lima in 2002, this happened in Ciudad Juarez in uh, such year. So there you start seeing that there is actually some ground to reality, even though the images may seem utterly uh, poetic. Poetic, I think, in the sense that it's, it's calling to sort of immediate emotion that doesn't need precisely to have some sort of support of a uh, context. Uh, I mean, in my understanding, uh, it's, a, it's an image that you react to on a very uh, personal, sentimental, emotional uh, base. Um, I think when you look into a more social or political dimension, there's already a whole kind of process of analysis. It's more like it's a, it's a, it's a slower operation um, and it's definitely one where your own uh, culture, 
personal history, um, whatever does influence your reading if you want. I think uh, it's, that's the same rule for a video or for an, a painting or for a drawing or for an animation. I think you need to have that poetic quality at first in order to make contact. And once that contact is made, you can eventually bring your uh, audience into a different sort of analysis and, and, and space and, and a more critical space. Um, but I think that in my understanding, and that's me talking as a, an artist, an individual artist, um, I think it is important to make that contact happen. If that contact doesn't happen, you've, you know, you're, you're, you're losing your time. Um, so there is, in a sense, you could say, and I'm saying it as, a, as we talk, uh, that I use the poetical dimension or sometimes the, a bit of humor in order to seduce the viewer into the image. And then once I trapped him, trapped him into the image, I'm trying to bring him somewhere else. And that is the same rule as I said for the videos or for any other type of medium. <laughs> humor is, is cultural and it's very difficult to export. Uh, so. I think there's a, and there I'm quoting France more than, I think it's more happening. Uh, you, there's some paintings that you could see a sort of humor in them, but I think there's more often a sort of sweetness, um, which some people find, um, not saying annoying, but like in the way, it's, it's, it's difficult to be sweet in the art world today. I mean, it's not a very uh, trendy attitude. It's much better to be critical. <laughs> so um, people have a, like sometimes a conflictive relation to the aspect of my world, but it's the way I work. I mean, it's the way I, uh, and, and I think sweetness does help opening up a broader public. I mean, in that sense, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very much wanting to embrace that. Uh, anything that will help the viewer enter the, the, my you know, imaginary world uh, is worth trying. I mean, it's pretty practical. When I started the series, I was moving places a lot. And the small size is purely because it would fit, it had to fit always in my suitcase. <laughs> So, um, and even nowadays, I mean, uh, if you were to put them all uh, together, it wouldn't take more than a couple of suitcases to bring them from one place to another. Mm -hmm. um, the color of the background is, was the color of the floor of my studio at the time. And because I was working a lot on the floor, it just happened that that color became the background. The greens, the greens had a more like a reference to the kind of it's what's called the veduta, and veduta is this backspace in uh, Renaissance Italian painting. There were these little scenes happening in the background, which was always found more interesting than the main subject, which usually was a, a boring saint. But what was happening in the background was much more interesting and captivating. And when I was when I started working on those tiny little like like look, someone looking through a hole and seeing a little kind of scene happening, like a, a spying or. A, um, this became like the space for these little scenes to happen, if you want. Um, but it happened... Uh, it just... I think that the first of, of those spaces happened probably by chance, and then it, I realized it was a very convenient support to introduce a series of different images. Um, and that's how it uh, lasted up till today. As I said, whenever I come to say something really through another medium, I mean, I don't, I'm not trained as an artist. Uh, I was trained as an architect, so I'm not, in a sense, good in any particular medium, uh, which means also that I work a lot with other people, which are very, I mean, excellent in what they do, whether it's film, whether it's uh, animation, whether it's painting. So I work a lot in collaboration, precisely because I'm not trained in any particular medium, but the same fact that I'm not a painter, I'm not a sculptor, I'm not a filmmaker, um, also frees me from 
the this kind of uh, cliche that painting is dead or it doesn't matter to me i mean if I, if painting is the best medium to say something that's just painting if poetry written poetry or, or a song or anything you can imagine is a better medium that's the medium i would choose i think in that sense I, really it's the, the, the idea and the intention behind the whatever i'm trying to say that leads to such or such medium um, this all said, the fact that I, I'm not commercializing my videos um, helps. I mean, painting is the financial uh, drive motor of my economy. I mean, uh, the, the paintings finance the videos, and that frees me of the necessity of selling the videos, and that's an enormous. Uh, both uh, freedom in terms of uh, creative freedom, you know, I'm a, my own kind of like uh, a client, um, and also it frees me from the complication of working with others and, and the exploitation aspect, if you want. I'm sure there could be other ways, huh? it's just the way I've managed to respond to the conflict of working with kids or working with a community in uh, Cuba or things like that, you know, the fact that it's out of the commercial circuit just makes it simpler for everyone. Um, I think yes and no, I mean, uh, I think I relate to it in terms that I respect so much the building that I've tried to be as discreet as can be. <laughs> I mean, I've certainly tried not to compete with the architecture. Um, and to offer something that was present, but very much on the the perimeter of the, the, the actual space. I think the space is so beautiful that the sole fact that to imagine, you know, uh, two, three people in the space just walking from one end to another along those little kind of uh, um, tiny little dots on the wall is enough to occupy the space. Uh, I think the dispersion in the space definitely comes from a, a desire to make people wonder, you know, tracing diagonals. Uh, because ultimately, I think it's a space that is more for movement and performance than for static objects. I mean, in another life. I would have loved to present something, not a choreography, but some sort of displacement happening in the space. Um, time and life made that impossible on this occasion, but you never know. I'm interested in opening up the public as much as can be. I mean, I'm not interested in the more elitist or uh, intellectual, academic uh, um, public, if you want, or keep exclusively to that. I mean, I don't think um, I like my mother and my neighbor and whoever to uh, have some kind of access to what I'm doing. I mean, some people can have a more intellectual reading and some people can have a very uh, immediate, um, intuitive, uh, if not instinctive kind of understanding of what it is. Uh, if you can work on both those levels, which is probably the most difficult part. Uh, I suppose I wasn't paying that much attention to such concept until I went recently to Iraq. And uh, in Iraq, I saw people, um, let me try to find the right word, uh, starving for beauty. You know, they were, uh, in the sense that, you know, they were, there was a lot of discussion about beauty. I mean, more than I've ever had anywhere else, uh, you know. And I think it's their way of reacting to the um, non-beauty, say, of what's happening to them. I mean, uh, in many ways. I mean, uh, the destruction of uh, culture, like uh, cultural heritage, the way the city has been uh, disfigured by war, um, by... Uh, uh, absolutely uh, careless urbanism, etc. And th their reaction um, is to try to bring back beauty into the world. And uh, 
the discussion came up because I showed a video I'd done in Afghanistan, and uh, and it happened that along the way of that video, there were lots of like garbage, etc. And they said, I mean, how can you do that? How can you show Afghanistan like that? It's ugly. And I said, actually, no, it, it is. But I've seen, you know, I'm not editing my, my uh, route along the, the, you know, touristic uh, attractions or uh, I'm just this is along the way. And they said, no, but you can't. Please don't portray Baghdad like you portrayed Kabul. Um, you know, show the beauty of Baghdad. Uh, um, and I'm not answering your question directly, but it certainly made me reconsider. Um, the concept of beauty. Yes, I, did, I think it does mean something nowadays to s certain people in, in a s at a certain time of their history. Um, I think beauty as itself is a bit of a void concept, personally. But I think within a certain history, it can become a really important uh, tool to restore uh, self-dignity, if you want, for a community. Mm -hmm. so that's. I would look at it now.